everybody, this is Budishan here. Today we're talking about percent yield. So here's some terms you really need to know. Theoretical yield is the amount of product you will get if all the reactants react. In other words, this is the maximum amount that you can possibly get out of the chemical reaction. And this is like the perfect world scenario, right? So theoretical is always gonna be a larger number than what happens in real life. And what happens in real life when we do a chemical reaction, that outcome is gonna be called our actual yield, okay? So this is like real life scenario. This is gonna be a smaller number than our theoretical yield. And this is the true amount that we actually produce from a chemical um, reaction um, in terms of mass. So let's go ahead and look at how we solve for percent yield now. It's a very easy equation. You're gonna do your actual yield divided by your theoretical yield, and then you're gonna multiply it by 100 to turn it into a percentage. So let's go ahead and look at a couple of problems. First, you need to look at your chemical reaction and see, is it balanced? This equation is balanced, so we're good to go. If it isn't, you need to balance it. If you forgot how to balance, I'll link a video on how to balance chemical equations down below. So let's go ahead and look at our question. In an experiment, 40 grams of KClO3 is heated until it completely decomposes. What is the theoretical yield of oxygen gas? The experiment is performed and the oxygen gas is collected and its mass is found to be 14.9 grams. What is the percent yield for the reaction? So they're asking us a lot here, but first let's kind of dissect what we have. We have one reactant and we have two products, right? It is giving us the mass of our reactant so what is this other number here, this 14.9 grams? It's saying they performed an experiment and the oxygen gas that they collected was 14.9 grams. In other words, that's a real world number. They did the experiment. They, they actually captured it, they calculated it. It was 14.9 when they um, took the mass of the oxygen. So that is the actual yield because that's the real world number, okay? Um, we are looking for the theoretical yield of oxygen gas. Oxygen gas is right here, O2. Our question did not mention at all KCl. So we're gonna just gonna ignore the KCl for this, um, for this problem. We don't need to think about it at all. In order to find theoretical yield, we are gonna do a mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry bridge. If you don't know how to do a mass-to-mass -mass bridge, I'm gonna put a video link below um, so you can get all caught up, okay? We are gonna start by doing one bridge for each reactant we have. This problem only has one reactant, so we only have to do one bridge, okay? Start with what you have, 40 grams of KClO3. Diagonal down is gonna be the molar mass of KClO3, and that's gonna be equal to one mole. Then diagonal down is gonna be the same units, moles of KClO3, except this time, we're going to our balanced chemical equation to find how many moles of it we have, and we have two, because we're gonna convert it right now into what we want, and we want oxygen gas, O2. So up here, we have three of them. So we have three moles of O2, and then diagonal down, we have one mole of O2 equaling the molar mass of O2, and you can always get the mass by going to the periodic table and looking that up, right? Being you have two, make sure you multiply it by two. Just a quick reminder, that is a diatomic. So all of our um, units are gonna cancel on the diagonal down. If you multiply the top, multiply the bottom, and then divide those answers, you will end up getting 15.7 grams of oxygen gas. This is our theoretical yield. So to put this in perspective, they performed the experiment and got an actual yield as 14.9 grams. But on paper, when we calculated it, it should have given us 15.7 grams. Therefore, we didn't get as much out of it as we thought we should have when we did the calculations. So now we can go ahead and take the percent yield to see what we're actually getting out of it. Like, is it worth doing this experiment? Is it worth the cost of the chemicals or the materials used, right? If your percentage is high, it's definitely worth it. If your percentage is low, you might wanna rethink some things. So we're gonna do our actual yield first, and that is the 14.9 grams they gave us in our word problem, and we're gonna divide that by our theoretical yield, the 15.7 grams that we calculated. Multiply it by 100 to turn it into a percent, 
and we get 94.9%. So that's a really good percent yield. I would recommend repeating this experiment because that's a fairly high number. Let's try an easier one. So here we have an equation. It is a balanced reaction already. If it's not, go ahead and balance it first. And this question says, oxygen is produced by heating potassium chlorate. The reaction produces 107 grams of oxygen gas. The theoretical yield is 117.5 grams of O2. Calculate percent yield. It gave us the theoretical yield already and the actual yield. Therefore, we don't have to calculate those, which is amazing. It's usually always going to give you the actual yield. And sometimes you'll get lucky enough. It will give you the theoretical yield and you don't have to do a stoichiometry bridge. In this case, it gave it to you. Amazing. So we can just go ahead and put it straight into our equation for percent yield. So the actual is going to be the 107 grams of O2. And we're going to divide that by our theoretical, which is the 117.5 grams of O2. Multiply it by 100 and we get 91.1% for our percent yield. So that was a super simple one. Let's try a bit of a more complex one. So we have our chemical equation and this one is balanced and ready to go. It says if you have 40 grams of C2H2 and 65 grams of oxygen and they're combined, they produce 25 grams of water, what is the percent yield? Well, this one we have two reactants and two products, right? It's giving us the mass of our two reactants and then it gives us another mass of water and it says they were combined and it produced. In other words, they performed this chemical reaction. They did this in real life and what they got out of it was 25 grams of water. H2O is water. Our question did not mention carbon dioxide, CO2 at all. So we're going to ignore that product right now. It's not necessary for this problem. So we want to go ahead and find percent yield. In order to do that, we need the actual yield, which we have right here, 25 grams of water. And we need the theoretical yield. It did not give that to us. So we're going to go have to calculate that by doing a mass to mass bridge, just like we did in the other problem. Except now we have two reactants and we need one bridge for each reactant. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set up both of my bridges and you can see I'm going to start with 40 grams of my C2H2 right here and then I'm going to set up my second bridge of the 120 grams of oxygen right here and we are going to go ahead and do the same method um, of doing the mass to mass bridge to get the answers. So the second column is always going to be the molar mass of your given. The third column is going to be the mole to mole ratio of your balanced chemical equation. And the fourth one is going to be the molar mass ratio of what you want. In this case, we want to find water, right? H2O. Do your math, multiply the top, multiply the bottom, and then divide those answers. And this is what it gives you. C2H2 can produce 27.67 grams of water, while oxygen gas can produce 27.01 grams of oxygen, of, uh, water, right? So which one is our limiting reactant then? It's going to be the one that produces less water. In this case, just the lower number. So 27.01 grams is lower, which means that O2 is our limiting reactant. That is what's going to stop us from producing more water. Okay. So our chemical reactions will stop as soon as we run out of oxygen. So this then is going to be our theoretical yield. Once we have produced 27.01 grams of water, we will have run out of oxygen. Therefore, it's our theoretical yield. We can no longer produce any more because we won't have any more oxygen to produce more. Alrighty. And I'm just going to leave this here if you want to pause it and just kind of read over what I just said. But let's go ahead and work on our percent yield now. Percent yield is going to be the actual yield divided by theoretical. So our actual, they gave us in our word problem, 25 grams of water divided by what we just found to be the theoretical 27.01 grams of water times it by hundred and you get 92.56%. And that is how you find percent yield. Go ahead, like this, you guys subscribe to see more. And if you need any more help with chemistry or stoichiometry, look on my channel. I have tons of videos for you. I'll see y'all next time.
bye everybody